Yo, it is good YouTube and welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the brand new NBA is back players coming today in NBA 2K24. My team got five players, talked about all of them yesterday, but the cards obviously are now out on 2K DB. Going to be taking a look at their stats, badges, and animations and seeing how good these cards are. I have very high hopes for a lot of these cards. I think this is definitely uh, potentially one of the better content drops that we've seen midweek this year. A lot of good cards today, hoping that there will be a way to get one or two of them for free. But with that being said, before we hop into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Help me push towards the 14,000 subscriber mark on the channel. I mean, we are so close to 14K at this point. Literally less than, I'm loading, waiting for the app to load, less than 30 subscribers away from 14K. So could literally hit that today. Would really appreciate it if y'all do subscribe to help me hit 14K. Without further ado, let's hop right into it. Take a look at Paulo Boncaro first and foremost, who I think is going to be really good. 110, 212,000 MT for each of these amethysts. Honestly, I think is a pretty reasonable amount of MT. Six foot ten with a seven foot wingspan at the power forward position. You got 80 speed and excel, capable shooter, super athletic, not a great defender. How fast twitch and precision dunker, gold posterizer, silver. Uh, I mean, he's got gold chase down, pogo stick, rebound chaser. Uh, when you look at these badges, defensively, he doesn't look great. He doesn't have any great playmaking or shooting badges. I assume his badges are going to be upgradable. The fact that or some of them are going to be upgradable, at least like uh, right now, it's showing that not a single one is upgradable, but that's not going to be the case, obviously. Um, but this card is not statistically or badge wise anything too insane i mean he's not an elite level defender he's got like 76 interior um he can shoot the ball pretty capably but not insane when you compare him to let's just say like a sean kemp uh he's a slightly better sh shooter than kemp um athletically they're pretty similar in terms of dunking and speed although sean is definitely going to dunk the ball better defensively also kind of similar uh paulo is a better playmaker more athletic better passer i mean this card is probably on the level of sean kemp like a top five-ish power forward in my team. I think he's a good card. I'm not sure he's insanely good, but Paul is always solid in my team. I do expect he will be a very, very solid card that I have honestly no doubts about because um, I know his animations are good. I know he's just going to play very, very solidly. Malcolm Brogdon, honestly, is not a card that I'm very excited about like at all i, I just I, I find it hard to get excited about a malcolm brogdon card i know he's six four with a six ten wingspan but his release is bad he's 78 speed he's slow and his release isn't very good so silver limitless range is nice playing badges are okay but doesn't have any sort of speed booster or handles for days which are maybe the two most important playmaking badges defensively he's super mediocre he's not an elite slasher and his best attribute is his shooting but he's not that great of a shooter because his release is pretty mediocre this malcolm brogdon despite being a six four pg is unfortunately probably the worst card in today's drop and it's honestly not particularly close that is a okay i'm just being completely honest i don't think malcolm brogdon is gonna be a card worth picking up today especially with how many good free and affordable options there are in my team already cards such as Dwayne wade kyrie irving even a guy like a baron davis or a john morant that you might have gotten for free out of an equal chance pack a couple weeks ago or one of the many other point guard options that you could be running in my team right now Malcolm Brogdon is not going to be worth the MT, and he's not going to be worth paying for to run on your squad, despite even being six foot four. Now, Laurie Markin is a card I am actually decently excited about, but I gotta say, 63 speed. I thought they would turn up the speed a little bit more. I mean, he got 63 speed on his Ruby. He doesn't even get a speed upgrade. That's kind of it's a little crazy. 63 is slower than I was hoping for on Laurie. I was hoping for a 70 or 72 speed on Laurie Markin because he's decently athletic in real life, and like that would make this card really, really solid because he's a great shooter. He's a pretty athletic, 80 driving dunk. I mean, he's a pretty darn good card to be completely honest defensively he's not good but offensively he's a great catch and shoot player even without limitless range i know he's got a great release and he's a true seven footer so uh he could play the power forward or center position really capably if he had a little bit more speed i understand defensively he's not great but i was hoping for a little bit more athletic ability to counteract that lack of defense and unfortunately he's just a little slow so release is going to be good and he is still going to be a really good seven foot stretch big but i gotta say a little bit disappointed again jaren is not a disappointing card 79 speed 75 three ball elite defender and a good dunker this is the best card from today's drop six foot ten seven foot four wingspan he can play power forward or center he's got a very big player build and he will play both positions at a very very high level so i don't expect you're going to have very many issues at all with this jaron jackson card i think he is looking like a top five center in my team right now half anchor half post locked and he's going to be an elite interior defender he's going to be a pretty good perimeter defender as well 84 perimeter 84 lateral got a silver interceptor he's going to play lanes arms are super long good athletic ability with that silver posterizer couple other good finishing badges as well doesn't have playmaking or shooting badges right now but i mean you add catch and shoot on it honestly you don't really need that many shooting badges right there right now his release is fast he, i mean he's a he's going to be an absolutely elite really really good catch and shoot shooter for a big man in addition to being an incredibly versatile good defensive card this is I mean, is he better than Anthony Davis? I think there is a serious argument to be made that the answer is yes. And Anthony Davis is a top four center in my team still right now. So, I mean, he's, he's faster than AD. He's 
Very similar as a shooter. He's not quite as good athletically in terms of dunking or the post, but he's a better defensive card all the way around than Anthony Davis. Uh, I mean, they're honestly quite similar cards. Jaron Jackson Jr. for 112K with that Hoff Anchor post locked on all that stuff is going to be a phenomenal card. I mean, he is really, really good. Very excited about him. Obviously, Joel Embiid is the card that I'm most excited about today, though. A 7-footer with a 7-5 wingspan, and he's got pretty good speed. 73 speed in Excel. You can shoot the 3 pretty well. 77 shot 3. Looking at the defense, he's got Hoff Anchor, Box Up Beast, Post Lockdown, Masher, Post Spin, and Rise Up. 90 interior, 79 lateral quickness is actually very solid, and then an 82 block as well. Well, he doesn't get every badge or anything like that. He shoots the 3 at a pretty capable level. He's going to be a really, really good interior player, and then obviously defensively, he's going to be a monster on the interior as well. Has capable enough speed. I feel like 73, especially as a true 7-footer, is fast enough to compete obviously he's not wilt or shack level of speed in, in the high 80s or anything like that but you put a shoe on him for speed you're going to get that up to around a 77 and he's going to be a really really good card in my team i think there is an argument to be made especially if you are more if you don't like the three hunting guard more pick and roll meta and especially with the way that the gameplay has been patched and tweaked recently i feel like it's a very very fair thing to say that this for a lot of people's play style, including potentially mine, might be the new best center in the game because he is so big and so capable defensively. And so he's going to be able to compete against Sheck and Wilt size-wise. While not as fast as them, he can shoot the ball. Those guys can't. 245,000 MT for Joel Embiid. Is that a good price? Well, that's debatable. 245K is a lot of MT. Hopefully there is an agenda to be able to get some of that MT back. Um... But I do think Embiid's going to be a really, really good card, and I have very high hopes for him as a whole, as potentially one of, if not the best centers in the game. Like, I'm very excited to try this card out. I probably will pick him up on my account to get gameplay with him and uh, see if he's going to make my team, because I could see, especially with the way the gameplay has been changing, I think he fits the meta of this game a lot more. Fits next to an SGA, who's a bigger point guard. Um, fits next to more of the rim-running athletic type guards. Um, MJ came out last week, those types of cards, because then you have more spacing on the court and don't have to rely on an inside center and going straight pick and roll every single play. And if that's the case, I mean, Joel Embiid, for, for 245k, that's a that's not a bad price. I, I will work with it, and I think he's a card I'm going to have to pick up and try out on my team at least because he looks like an absolute monster and definitely looks like a great card. I mean, he and Jaron Jackson Jr., both incredible cards. Laurie Market and Paulo are both good, although not quite as great as I was hoping they would be. And then Malcolm Brogdon, not a card I'm super high on, to be completely honest. But that doesn't mean that as a whole, this drop is not a very, very solid one. Uh, but giving us multiple really, really good options uh, in terms of power forward options, just a lot of good big men today. A stretch five type option that's a little bit of a counter to Shaq and wilts to a certain extent that also again all these cards you don't have to lock in for them you can sell them back later get some of your mt back grade them and get even more of your mt back that type of stuff is a huge w got to give 2k again a lot of props for this type of stuff it's feel like they're doing a good job so far in content and i like in the fact that we haven't started off season two with two lock-ins i mean i know carmelo and tim duncan were lock-ins but it's nice to not start off the season with a bunch of gigantic super expensive lock-ins to start off the season mj was just viable you didn't have to lock in for him for one of the biggest name best cards in the game same thing with this joel Embiid. the mvp might be the best center in the game and you don't have to lock in for him either i think that's a huge w combining that with the free content guys like wilton sga terry dishinger if he gets updated later in the season and how Halloween event that's probably coming this weekend on Friday as well. And I think 2K starting off content in season two very, very well. So hopefully y'all are excited about some of these cards like I am. And hopefully y'all are looking forward to using them in game. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe. I'll be back with more 2K content very, very soon. And I appreciate y'all. Peace.